next virtual community meeting. Uh, my name is Regina Ramos. I'm the Orange County uh, Parks and Recreation Division Project Manager. I oversee the Planning and Development section. Um, before we get into the presentation, I just want to mention a couple of things. Uh, we'll, we'll save question and answers towards the end. Um, and we'll primarily use the chat so that way we, we have record of everything and our answers and your questions and your comments. We want to make sure we capture all of that. Um, and I would also like to recognize uh, a few people that are on the call here with us. Um, I would like to acknowledge Matt Sudmeyer. He's the Parks and Recreation Division Manager. He's here with us. Uh, we also have um, Mark Arias. He's with the Parks Advisory Board. He's here as well. Thank you, uh, Mark, for coming. We also have representatives from the commissioner's office. I see Drew Dietzen, and I also see Commissioner Wilson is, is here on the call. Um, Commissioner, would you like to, to say a few words? Just a brief thank you. I'm, I'm here listening also, and I'm grateful for the opportunity for engagement. All right, thank you. Um, so with that, I'm just going to go ahead and hand this over to Grant Wenrick. He's a landscape architect here within the Parks and Recreation Division, and he'll be presenting this information to you. Uh, yeah, can everybody hear me? Okay, it looks like I'm seeing a yes. Y yes. Uh, am I am I too loud? Because I do have a headphone and microphone on. Okay. You sound great. Okay, great. So, as uh, Regina said, she's our Parks Planning uh, Section uh, Director, uh, Project uh, Project Manager. Uh, I'm Grant Wenrick, landscape architect, uh, 25 years uh, landscape architecture, go Gators, that's where I went. So proud to um, be a part of this uh, process, um, looking at this park and uh, it, lots of growth in West Orange, uh, Horizon West, Southwest Orange, as we all know. Um, this is a beautiful site, overlooks Panther Lake. And um, I reached out to the HOAs. We sent mail outs. We had several hundred mail outs go out. Yard signs went up. I don't know what's left. Sometimes they tend to disappear, um, but they have been, they were placed out about a week and a half ago. Um, so hopefully everybody got, got notice and um, we're looking forward to working on this one. Certainly there's a, very, a variety of neighborhood parks out in Horizon West, but this is certainly a nice one as well. So anyways, without further ado, um, let me move on into the presentation. Uh, Okay, so yeah, I think uh, Regina's introduced Matt Sudemeyer is our parks director. He's uh, on the first screen. I could see his picture. I'm not able to get my video going, so I apologize uh, right away for that. I was trying to get that up, but nonetheless, you got a little picture of me uh, with Lake Michigan in the background is what that picture is. <laughs> um, vacation a year or two back. But anyways, uh, as I mentioned, I'm Grant Weinrich, landscape architect here with Orange County Parks, and I'll keep moving on that. Uh, the site overview. Okay, so as I was uh, talking about the different parks, um, the, the planned parks that have occurred and are occurring in Horizon West, this whole list gives you an idea of what um, has been going on. These parks were all part of a large sector plan that was done 20 plus years ago. Uh, I think when I was starting my career, some of the big planning firms in town were all trying to help plan uh, Horizon West. So it's kind of interesting. I'm a Winter Garden resident as well. So it's interesting to see how all this uh, has gotten developed over the years, um, all the way up from Lake Kaywood Park, the very top of the this particular slide up in the north in Bridgewater Village, down to the south. Um, oh, Watermark Park, I think the circle disappeared there on this particular slide. Um, 20, 2024, it's about four up from the bottom, bottom right there, and that's where we're at. Oh, okay. There, there's the circle. Okay. All right. So this is kind of an area map uh, of the watermark area, and uh, primarily, uh, what's nice about this is obviously, uh, I'm sure we have residents on the Lakeshore HOA, which is to the north and to the west of the watermark park. It's there in yellow, um, right off Sidell Road, across uh, a little bit northeast of the big high school, Horizon High School. That's down there, and then watermark. Uh, Watermark Terrace is a big HOA as well, and the Lakeside uh, HOA to the north. Um, a Waterside and Esplanade are a little bit farther down, Side L, if anyone's uh, calling in from there. 
water leaves over on the other side of 429, the west side of 429, and Avalon Cove as well on the west side of 429. So that's kind of the area, area map. And then there's, uh, you know, Panther Lake, of course, it kind of weaves uh, up throughout the lake shore, uh, HOA, which is nice. And I'll move on. Uh, this is a little bit closer, zoomed in now to the actual site. Um, this particular site, um, there's Summer Lake Grove Street. And I, I do want to note that it does have on-street parking. That sometimes is a concern at our neighborhood parks. Uh, this does have on-street parking um, on both sides. Um, these neighborhood parks were envisioned to be built with elementary schools back in that visioning process from 20 years ago. Uh, the elementary school, I'm not sure the name, particular name of that one, but it is well under, well under construction. Um, and that's off there to the west of the park site. And then across is Watermark Terrace to the south of, along Seidel. And then Watermark Terrace, I think, are either condos or townhomes. I think they're just to the east of the, the park site. The park uh, kind of slopes a little bit towards the lake. I got some pictures I'll get into here in a few minutes. Uh, we'll keep moving. Um, oh, you know, I do want to bring up, we, you know, one of the things, there's an, a potential opportunity, obviously, for some lakeside overlooks on this park. Um, I, I think the land is a little bit closer to the high water line where we could possibly get a little bit to on the north, uh, northwest part on the kind of the south side of Panther Lake. So that's something that we could think about in the comments as we go through the presentation. Oh, okay, yeah, here's the nice pictures. Okay, so... The top left picture uh, is looking um, south towards Seidel Road. Uh, yeah, towards uh, looking back out towards the main uh, collector road there, Seidel. And then um, top right picture is the nice view of Panther Lake. Uh, it's real, looks very pristine, very nice lake, very nice lake uh, when I was out there in the morning. Um, and then the bottom left picture is a wide open, modest sloping site towards the lake. So there's a wide open area. I believe uh, the site was pretty much all Orange Grove, as a lot of West Orange County County was uh, many, many years ago, because I looked at old aerials and it seemed to be all Orange Grove from what I could tell. So um, the site has been cleared, which is good. That helps, uh, kind of helps us out, get out of the gate, which is good. And then um, the bottom right picture is looking north uh, into the, the park site towards the lake there. And again, it's open, it, it kind of slopes uh, you know, not not gently, a little little more than gently, but you know, it does slope. Uh, have, has a noticeable slope towards the lake, but not not too steep, which is good. Okay. Um. So, what our goal is with the neighborhood park is we generally try and have people walk or bike. Occasionally, people will drive to a neighborhood park. They're generally consist of two to nineteen acres. Um, the pocket parks are usually just tiny two acre parks or less. Generally, they. Um, and then the community park are 20 to 149 uh, acres. The district park's over 150 acres, and the regional park would be 500 acres or more. Uh, the Horizon West Regional Park, which we don't really want to get into too much tonight, but that is up there near uh, Independence and Hamlin uh, area, and that is um, still in the development design stage, um, but that's a whole nother um, something that's kind of beyond uh, your particular neighborhoods where we're at right uh, tonight, so. Okay, so yeah, I mentioned that the neighborhood park, two to 19 acres. Typically, yeah, and this site, I think, is uh, five, a little over five acres, 5.3. I was trying to remember the exact, but I know it's, I know it's at least five. I, I'm not sure if I had listed that. So when we, let's get into the recreational amenities, and we'll see at what are potential park amenities. And we have a survey that we'll get into towards the end of this presentation as well. Um, one of the uh, potential amenities that y'all may vote on uh, is a playground with its shade um, and then also the rubberized surface we like to do is kind of our typical park standard the PIP port in place is what it's called uh, this one has a smaller shade sail sometimes they're integrated like that and then other times we will try and integrate the large triangular sails and that's what we've done uh, Summer Lake Park was one that we've planned uh, a couple years back it's in, in the bid process now um, these large triangular sails can be anywhere from, you know, 40 to 50 feet, uh, kind of triangulated each way, uh, along each, uh, length of the triangle. So that it would offer more shade. Um, and those are, have gotten popular putting a larger shade. And that was, we did Bentshire Park back a couple months ago. And I noticed that we had quite a few comments for shade. So that's always, always an issue in Florida. <laughs> I could totally, totally understand the shade requirement and, and the request as well. So. Another option are picnic pavilions. Uh, 
this particular pavilion might be a little bit bigger than what we necessarily want. We're, what's happening is we're getting hit with fire code requirements. If, we, if our pavilion gets a little too big, they sometimes want a water source or some type of fire uh, hose stub out, which can kind of eat up some budget if we get too big. But certainly a pavilion of some type can be under consideration uh, for this particular park site. Uh, shade trees, obviously, that's always, you know, when all the orange groves got wiped out and there weren't any existing native trees, we uh, certainly consider shade trees. Summer Lake Park, we've got an, almost 100 trees that we're trying to put back, and we're always uh, looking for grants for trees for different park sites. And um, anyways, these, this is a nice park. Uh, this is, I think, Shadow Bay Park in southwest, uh, like Dr. Phillips area, I believe. Um, it came out real nice. So then in this particular playground was integrated amongst uh, some existing trees. So that was, that worked out very well. Creates a nice space. Another uh, potential park amenity is a large open field. We can consider this particular site, maybe some grading to level things off just a little bit. Um, moving, moving dirt is not too, too expensive uh, to get a nice kind of level or gener somewhat level uh, playing area. So that's something at Watermark with this, you know, broad open field that we could look at um, or just some open play space, a frisbee, you know, whatever, multi-purpose type sports, kick and soccer ball, um, those type of things. Another um, thing that we've done with some of our neighborhood parks are integrate uh, fitness equipment. And you go out and you can enjoy working out outside, not just inside all the time. It creates a nice uh, environment. You're there with the lake. You know, there's lots of possibilities with the site. So uh, fitness equipment is certainly something that we can consider. And then also uh, this this park to the north that we looked at a couple months back, a dog park was something that um, kind of had mixed reviews, but certainly uh, a lot of people have dogs and they want to get their dog out playing. There's usually what we do with these dog parks is we'll have a, a small dog area and a large dog. I think they're separated by the weight. I'm not, I think it's around 20, 25 pounds, I think is the uh, cutoff between small dog and large dog. Um, I'm not, uh, oh, right there, it says that I see it in the slide, it says 30 pounds and under. Okay, excuse me, so I just have to read the slide. <laughs> it's in the fine print right there to the right, so that was kind of neat. Um, so yeah, I'm not a dog owner, so I'm not sure. I know they were separated by weight, so it says it right there, so it's a good thing to see. Okay, another nice thing is a community garden. Um, if, you know, people want to get out, I know some of these uh, lots, they don't always have a lot of land, and some of these parks can offer a little bit more land. We can put a water source in. Uh, Summerport has a, yeah, this is at Summerport Park off uh, Bridgewater Crossing Boulevard. I think over in the corner of the park, there's a small community garden. And uh, yeah, people can claim a plot or however we want to think about, you know, uh, equitably distributing those areas out, um, first come, first serve, or how, you know, however it works. But that's certainly an uh, opportunity. Okay, and then this is a nice slide. Um, one of our staff, I think, found uh, open, flexible space where maybe it's not a large, large open field. If you want to do, uh, you know, smaller yoga classes or something in the park, you know, just to have smaller groups of, you know, maybe 20 to 40 people, not huge groups, but um, certainly something like that could be looked at. So um, that's something that can be thought about. Another park amenity are kind of miniature skate uh, features. It helps, what skate features do is they help meet the needs for those kind of preteen and kind of teen uh, aged individuals. And they could be done, it could always be put into a part of the park that's away from residential. Um, and it just, uh, you know, features to let these teenagers kind of get some energy out. And those of you with teenagers, you know, get out of the house might be a phrase, but in a nice way, hopefully. <laughs> Um, that's certainly something that can be considered. We generally don't do all out skate parks. They just tend to get pretty expensive and can eat up a lot of budget, but, um, certainly some skate features or, you know, mini skate features are is something we could certainly consider. So now those were some of the items that possibilities that we could do. Um, some items that we don't want to consider, um, generally on these neighborhood parks, just mainly to budget and also staffing would be a splash pad. Actually, I ran into a resident in your clubhouse there at Lakeshore. Uh, she may be on the call. Uh, but anyways, she had asked, the first thing she said was splash pad. I'm like, well, we generally don't do those. But because um, what would happen with splash pad is we may get people coming in from a little bit farther out than just your neighborhoods that it's it's generally, you know, to service kind of that half mile to mile radius from that park. It's a neighborhood park. We don't want to draw in a lot of people like Winter Garden. 
downtown, for example, has a splash pad, and that can attract people in from quite quite a few miles away. But there's plenty of well, usually, unless there's an event in Winter Garden, there's usually plenty of parking to accommodate that. So, anyways, we don't want to consider splash splash pads. Uh, gyms, obviously, big you know big budget items uh, that would attract a lot a lot of trips and magic gyms. That I think we have in four or five different county uh, parks that were built. Uh, with the uh, in conjunction with the Orlando Magic, we just stuff like that we don't do. Um, some of the things that we just want to be careful with courts. Um, I know I've seen uh, some comments for tennis courts or pickleball, which I think we could consider. Um, basketball can can vary, um, or even a half basketball. I think we've recommended just so we're not getting a full full court basketball. Um, and and I think some of the amenities uh, the high school across the street may have. Some of that, I'm not sure how public those amenities are at the high school. I, I know where I lived in, in Clearwater, and I was able to use those uh, high school amenities um, near where I grew up. But uh, So that's just something to consider. Uh, swimming pool, again, another big budget item. We have to lifeguard it. Um, it there's whole safety concerns with uh, the pools and safety concerns as well, so we just we don't consider pools. Um, and then some examples, that uh, specific examples, that we have, this is um, Independence Park and the village of uh, Bridgewater Village. It's in the neighborhood of Independence. It opened in 2015, <clears throat> that's five acres. Has a dog park, you have playground picnic tables, uh, p a pavilion benches, tot lot and open space. Um, yeah, it's the, the, the circle above the playground in the picture, a big oval, the fence, that's the fenced in dog park area. And actually that one's pretty, it's all, I think that one is all inclusive. It's not really separated out between the two different, you know, large dog, small dog. But the ones that we're doing now, we're trying to kind of separate out just because they, the dogs will play at kind of different intensities and we don't want the big dogs hurting the little dogs. So that's just something that we'll have to consider if that's something that gets flushed out as a top, top item. Okay, some report, I'd mentioned that. Um, and Summerport Park here is off Bridgewater Crossing Boulevard on the south. And um, that opened in 2012. It's off Bridgewater Crossing Boulevard at 5.87 acres, a little bit bigger. This particular dog park here is just to the left of the big the big oval sidewalk that you see and the circle. And then there's a pavilion. That was the pavilion picture I showed you uh, a little while back. And then, um, yeah, so there is a fence that kind of segregates out large dog and small dog on this. So that one was done uh, nicely. Uh, then there's some climbing structure south of the pavilion, and then the the, the shade sails up here north of that pavilion, a little bit to the upper left of the uh, the big oval, our uh, sh the playground underneath the shade sails, and that one is actually very well shaded. I that one came out well; it was well designed. There's some fitness equipment over here in the bottom, kind of right of the oval, and then that community garden is up here in the corner in the top right of that oval that you're seeing on the in the plan view. And then there's the pictures up there on the top of the, the slide. Kind of shows you what I was just talking about. The playground, the cover, or yeah, the playground, the covered park, because there's a climber actually with that playground, that uh, pavilion, and then the dog park that we had talked about. So yeah, some report came out pretty, pretty nice. Um, okay, so the park timeline. We're in the first uh, public meeting now in um, kind of early January. We're going to close the survey in about two weeks on the 26th or there, thereabouts. We won't do it before the 26th, but we're hoping to close the survey. So please, please get your comments in prior to the 26th. We'll have a second public meeting. I've got a date on that here in a slide that's coming up. I think it's in about six weeks, but I'll uh, let me look at the date. Um, we have a potential for a third public meeting if there's kind of a lot of controversy. Typically, we don't have a third public meeting. That's if needed. We got a little asterisk on that. Um, and then... We go into master planning after that. Actually, I probably need to move that over. That master planning will occur a little bit later. And then the design, um, yeah, the design is when the consultant, the engineer, uh, will come on board and actually design it. Um, going into the latter part of 2022, and then uh, construction, it's a million dollar budget, so we just we have to kind of add up what the amenities are that people want. And we are um, always trying to struggle the budget. Construction's been pretty pretty crazy here the last year or two, but we're going to do our best to get everything that everybody wants. Not, not, well, not everything, but we're going to prioritize the top, you know, four to five, six items or so. And we'll try and get all those in and we'll, 
we'll, we'll bring that back in the second meeting and uh, hear back from y'all. So we appreciate that. Let's see. Okay, next steps. Yeah, as I've said, or we said is, um, please fill out the, the survey it is completely, um, and you know, as soon as you can, that will certainly help us out. There's the, uh, the link at the top of this. We're gonna, I think we're gonna post this online as well somehow after, uh, after this meeting. Uh, so it's surveymonkey.com forward slash r forward slash watermark park is the link. Okay, yeah, the next meeting is March 30th, 2022 at 6 p.m. I think we're gonna do that virtually as well, as far as I know, with this uptick in COVID. I think we're gonna get back to virtual just when we thought it was safe to come outside. It's not, it's not, apparently not safe. But anyways, appreciate y'all listening. Um, and then uh, questions and comments. Oh, we're gonna, I think we're gonna do the comments in the, again, in the chat section, I think is how we did this before on this type of meeting. There's a chat section I think in the bottom, uh, yeah, the bottom of the the WebEx call here. So, let me see. Um, I see one question already from N. Gandhi. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, what is the reason tennis courts or basketball courts would not be preferred? Um, a, a full basketball court or tennis courts tend to draw in uh, more people and would require some additional parking. And we don't include that with neighborhood parks. Neighborhood parks, we consider them to be walkable park. Um, so there's nowhere the kids go. Oh, okay. Uh, you're stating that the one at Independence is a little bit small and it doesn't occupy the kids for very long. Um, we are hoping. Sorry, I'm trying to get to. They're hoping for a bit more. Okay, we'll um, we'll take note of that. Thank you, Deanna. And correct, Mark, we, we don't include parking at neighborhood parks unless there's already on street parking that that's very common um, in the neighbor, uh, Horizon West area. And I don't recall it, but I don't think this one has on street parking because it's next to major roads. Regina, yes. Would um, if there was enough interest, would could tennis be considered, or is that too big a draw to a neighborhood park? Um, I would say uh, go ahead and add it to the comments. Um, um, if it's not currently listed on the survey, to go ahead and, and input that if if you're interested in it, and we could then uh, look at how many people want that and discuss that more internally. Yeah, most most tennis people are usually pretty pretty nice. <laughs> um, and I see a question here: Will you construct this park during normal hours? Uh, yeah, we always uh, do construction during business hours um, for our parks. We're not like uh, public works or traffic engineering. Uh, we do ours in normal business hours, and typically not even on the weekends. So. Uh, this isn't a, uh, can you add golf cart parking to the plan? I don't know if that's anything that we've done internally. Um, Matt, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, is, golf is it cart a golf... parking? Yeah, so golf carts are allowed in that area? No, they're so... not. <laughs> I see a no, if, if, Commissioner Wilson. Yeah. If, if they're not allowed in the area, then no, we wouldn't allow golf carts. Um, but again, these are neighborhood parks. Golf cart, you know, is a new thing for us, actually, I guess. Um, but yeah, we don't build parking for vehicles. I guess whether they're street legal golf carts or not, as well as cars, typically in a neighborhood park. All right, thank you, Matt. Um, and then I have a question from Todd Jackson. Can you tell me what will be done for traffic control? 
And um, so we're not we're not including parking. Um, we're not impacting the road, and so we're not adding uh, vehicular volume. We're, we're not addressing the road in, in any way. Um, but certainly, we could. Uh, if you have a specific concern, you could email me, and I could get that to our traffic engineering um, staff here within the the county and see if um, they could address any concerns you might have, uh, existing concerns. And Melissa says, thank you. You're welcome, Melissa. Uh, there, um, Grant, would you verify, uh, Mary is stating that you had mentioned there's on-street parking, and I don't recall, is there on-street parking adjacent to water, the proposed park? Does anybody know? Yes, yeah, there's, okay. um, there's gotta be, I bet there's probably, I'm just guessing, I, but it's a good question. I probably should have measured it up. I think there's, gosh, probably at least 10 on each side, maybe 10. I don't, let me, I can try and look real okay. quick. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Let me uh, pull up Google Earth or something. That would be great. I, I I wasn't under the impression that there was parking on Seidel Road. So if, uh, yeah. if there is, then yeah, let's clarify well, that. No, 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 no. The parking, the parking, I'm sorry. The parking is on Summer Lake Groves uh, Road. I think it's the road that comes in right there it's um on the school side it's not on side l it's um it's on that road that comes in on the west side of the park okay going north to south yes yep mm, okay so there's existing on-street parking okay so we're not going to do anything with that if that's existing then and that's available to people So a uh, question from uh, Greg Smith, um, is there a plan to possibly build a boardwalk or overlook to Panther Lake? So I know, uh, Grant, I don't know, recall if you mentioned this or not, but that portion of property we don't actually own. There's a sliver we do not own. Um, so we don't have direct access to the lake. Uh, is that correct, Grant? Yeah, that is correct. Um, there may be a little bit, it may be closer on the, uh, there's just a tiny, over where the sidewalk is along Summer Lake Groves Road, um, that particular part of the parcel may actually come in contact with the the high water line of the lake. Um, it may be possible to get closer to the lake at that particular spot. I'd have to verify. Um, okay. Well, that's something that Grant, I think you could look into a little bit further, and, and we sure. could. Uh, yeah, people can put. That's a possibility. People can put in the comments. Um, yeah, let's see here. Oh, it's not showing it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. They can add that to the comments. And uh, thank you, Deanna, for uh, the information regarding the, the skate parks. Take that into consideration. Um, I see a vote for tennis courts. Tennis, I see a couple of them. Um, and... Sorry. I think as messages come in, that changes what I can see. I'm going to try to maximize it so I can see a little bit more. All right. Um, so I have Brian. Um, I don't know the answer to your question, Brian. Uh, is there a permitting process if organized soccer or football games wanted to use the park for regular practices? So that open space you're referring to, um, I don't know. Matt, do you do you know um, if uh, there's a So I'm reading process? his comment regarding the use of the park, the park over near Bay Lake Elementary School has soccer practices going on. Um, they use pop-up goals. They don't have. Uh, I'm not sure where that park is or what the name of that park is, but uh, if it's a if it's one of our small neighborhood parks, we don't allow um, group team use in these neighborhood parks. Then we probably need to post that. So if you can, you. I'll I'll look that up. I'll look it up on the aerial where Bay Lake Elementary School is. So for our neighbor school has, oh, the park over near. Yeah, I'll look that up. Okay. All right. So to recap for neighborhood parks, we, we don't um, permit organized soccer, right? It's more recreational. 
Right. If we, yeah, we, if we build a basketball court, we wouldn't allow teams to practice. If we build a tennis court, we wouldn't allow, um, t t you know, tennis teams to practice. Or in, and then same with our open space, football teams, soccer teams. Yeah, that makes sense because that would require parking as well. Um, Correct. Yeah. Uh, so what hours will the park be open? It's from dawn till dusk. So it changes um, throughout the season. And then um, if I can interrupt you, uh, Regina Commissioner, thank you for, um, I think we skipped your comment, but you said uh -oh. that uh, there is a re uh, ordinance, golf cart ordinance in the works, but right now they're not. Wait, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. And then if Grant, if you could post the uh, link to the survey again in the chat, we had a, a request for that. Okay. Okay, so Brian uh, Matt is giving some information on where the uh, the park is located. Okay, thank you, Brian. Yep. And I don't see any more comments or questions. Uh, no, here we go. One more. Okay, so Deanna, um, thank you for, for that additional information regarding the, the skate park. Um, any more? Uh, so, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but picnic pavilions in neighborhood parks are not are they not reserved? They are in our community parks, right? Where we provide outlets and so forth, but the ones in neighborhood parks, we typically, uh, it's first come, first serve. Correct, yes. right. Because right, we don't have the staff to to police that and you know do the reservation system and everything. So Regina, mm -hmm. on the on the on street parking, maybe I, I can try and show share this particular screen here. Let me uh, see if I can find that. Um, okay. So I think there's a share there. Share. Okay, do you have the map of the the park up? Yes, we see it. Oh, okay, good. So there's a bump out on the driveway coming in Summer Lake Grove Street. And I did of the center line from where it gets wider down at the south you see the map moving yes okay so it gets wider i don't know 100 feet in from side l and it's 36 feet across but anyways that length all the way up to shorebird lane coming into lakeshore it's about it's a little over 900 feet so if we did a parking space every 25 feet that would be 36 parking spaces on each side. Um, whether we can get parking on both sides, you know, it gets a little bit tight, but I've seen it on residential streets where cars can kind of bob and weave a little bit. But if there ever was a big event, either at the school or the park, um, that's up to 36 cars on both sides, you know, regular cars. This is not big trucks, but regular cars. Um, so that'd be 72, possibly 72 cars, 36. So I really think the bottom line is that there's quite a bit of parking um, in proximity to the park. And then, uh, yeah, actually, you know what, this, um, yeah, that particular, and then the parcel, do you see the parcel that's highlighted in like the red, the pink? Yes. Okay, well, that's, that is in fact owned and managed by Orange County Board of County Commissioners. And that particular parcel is not, well, it's called APF1. Well, like maybe it is part of the park. Okay. Yeah, so that one does kind of, that does touch the lake there. That's the sliver that I was thinking about. See how it's up there on the bottom of Panther Lake? Okay. So, um, and I think this other parcel, let me look at that. That might be HOA. Let's see. Yeah, Lakeshore Preserve, HOA. And then this is the the park. It kind of stops at the upland of the the, the slope of the lake. And then... The next parcel down there that covers uh, the eastern part of Panther Lake is actually, uh, yeah, Watermark uh, Homeowners Association. If they 
if we wanted to do something there, we just may have to work out an agreement with the uh, homeowners association to, to do it in that particular, if we want to get near the lake on that particular part of the park site. Um, so, but yeah, this part over here near uh, Summer Lake Groves down on the south, um, southwest part of the site does have, um, looks like it goes right to the water line pretty much more or less. I'm sure that Walt Lake fluctuates a little bit, but uh, so that may, that may offer an opportunity, um, you know, to, to do, to do something there. Okay. So we'll look at that just a little bit more closely to verify that. But if that um, that is indeed the case, then um, I would say uh, the, for those of you on the call, feel free to include that in the open yeah. uh, comments if that's something you all want. Um, I also want to address, I, I see a few comments uh, coming in just for clarification. So thank you all for that information. Um, I do see Brian A. Uh, provided a comment about regarding tennis courts uh, uh, preferring there be light during the the fall winter if due to park hours but we don't include a uh, lit courts on our neighborhood parks um again they're they're adjacent to residential areas we, we try to minimize that as much as possible that would be reserved for a community park um another reason why we don't put many courts on our uh, neighborhood parks and There's a few more comments coming in regarding parking. So we've noted those. Um, uh, I'll just make this the, the last call for any more questions. If you, you have any or, or comments, again, feel free to, uh, to provide comments in the survey as well. Okay, do you guys have the, uh, the link to the, uh, the park web? Web page, did that pop yeah. up? Okay, so that's I, I the... see that, and I've included it in in the chat as well, Grant, for oh, okay. the web page, and that'll also take out to the survey. Yeah, I wasn't able to get to the chat. I've got the screen minimized, but that that'll help. I think it was www uh, www um, and then it was forward slash r forward slash, and I think it was Watermark Park. I think is was the survey survey link. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wilson, would you like to um, close us out since the chat's through? I think uh, Regina, great presentation and Grant, great presentation. And Commissioner, let me unmute you, I apologize. Thank you so much, um, Grant and Matt and Regina and to all the residents that are here. I really love listening to um, things that are important to people and seeing the potential in this. It's exciting. So um, if you're on this right now and you haven't already, please share this um, link so that people can fill out the survey while it's still available. And um, yeah, it looks like it's going to be beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner.